morning. Praise the Lord. It is a new day, a new beginning that God has granted us that we may give thanks to him. Let us start our day by giving thanks to God for his faithfulness, his mercies, and also for the gift of life and good health. You may also not be in good health, but at least you are alive. It is something to show you that you are special and God cares for you. It is also another day that you may pray towards God's healing and also restoration. When he has granted you a day, he's calling unto us to persist in prayers, to continue asking for what we don't have, for what we need, and he will give. God has called us to persist in prayers, so giving us, granting us another day, and yet there are things he has not accomplished and he has not maybe given unto us, we are reminded another day to go before God and persist in our prayers and ask him. He says, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the doors will be opened. Let us continue to seek and we will find. Another opportunity, another day to seek, to knock and to ask. Is It is also a new day that we continue with our theme of giving. Now that God has given us another day, we are learning that we too are called to give. Because we are created in his image, let us do according to what he does. Let us ask that we may have the characters that God has to be givers, to be people who are merciful, to be people who can provide for others, to be people who can defend those who are needy and the poor, to be people who can visit other people as God visits us on a daily basis. Today he has visited us and he is teaching us and he's continuing to remind us about giving as an act of worship. And now that we have learned a lot, this month we'll be talking more about different types of giving, different types of offerings, different types of sacrifices. Allow me today to start with tithing. And we know tithing is giving our 10% of what we have, we have received. Tithing is a portion. We tithe a portion of what we have received. We don't give what we don't have. That is the principle, that God is not asking us to give something we have not received. And we know that we have received from him. 10% a portion should be, number one, before anything else. Before we spend what we have received, 10% of that should be our tithe. Why? Because we should give, one, the best. Number two, the first fruits. God has given us the best. We too should give the best. The best is first fruit. The first fruit, the first 10% of what we have received belongs to him. Let us give the best by giving before we spend. By giving after we've spent, then it means we are giving the leftovers. God is not interested with the leftovers, but the first fruit. And tithe is one of the perfect examples of fast fruits. The moment we receive, we give. Number two is the percentage. He's just asking us to give 10% of what we have received in everything we have done. Giving, when we give, we are responding, number one, being obedient to his word because he's calling unto us in his word. And we read in Malachi 3 that we should give. We are obeying. Number two, giving our tithes is also a form of thanksgiving because we are thanking God for his providence. God, were it not for you, were it not for your providence, I wouldn't have had a 10% to give to you. We are responding towards his providence, towards his love, because it is out of love that he has provided for us. It is out of love that he has given us opportunities to work, places to work, businesses to engage in, minds to think, and also careers that we are engaged in. It is out of his love that now we are responding with 10% of what God has given unto us. We've read Malachi many times, and in Malachi 3, I will read from verse 9, that you are, no, let me read from verse 10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. 
Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not flow, I will throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will be not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. God calling us to give our tithes, but also gives promises when we tithe. That one, he will open gates of blessing, the floodgates of blessings from heaven, that blessings will flow, that will not have room, they will overflow when we tithe. Number two, he says that he will protect us from the devourer who comes and devours our crops. And these crops are maybe our jobs, our careers. He will protect our careers. He will protect our jobs. He will protect our businesses because he is a God who promises and also fulfills his promises. Number three is that the fruits of our labor will grow to ripe, to, to ripe that they will not fall before they ripe. At times we start things and they are interrupted in between before they ripe, before they succeed, then they die a natural death. But God is promising us that he will make sure that everything we are involved with will grow to its success through giving a portion, a 10% of what God has given unto us. From these three promises, one thing we learn today is that we do not live by the 90% we are left with, but we live by the 10% we give. Remember, this is the 10%. It is the 10% that opens floodgates of blessings. It is the same 10% that helps you, that God protects you from the devourer. It is the same 10% that helps everything you do to grow towards its success. Many times we have failed to give our 10% because of our expenditure, because of the needs we have, because of the things we need, we want to do, but forgetting that we do not live by the 90%. In fact, you do not eat the 10%. You continue receiving what you eat because of the 10% you give. What God is trying to teach us is, the more you give the 10%, the more I will open blessings. The more you receive more, and the more you'll give more 10%. If we stop giving the tithe, therefore, what means it means is that the gates, the floodgates of blessings will not be opened because we have not entrusted God. We have not trusted God with what we have. We have not even trusted God with a portion of what we have. Now for him to, he will not trust us with more because we are not faithful with the little. Remember we are stewards. Everything we have, we manage it for God. It belongs to him. We just have it, just to manage it as stewards. And now he's telling us, now that I have given you, give a portion, a 10% as fast fruit, and I will continue to supply for you. The moment we stop giving, then there is a possibility that God may stop supplying because our floodgates of blessings are opened by our action, our obedience towards giving our tithes to God. Two, we have said, you do not live by the, the 90%. In fact, you don't pay your school fees with the 90%. No. God has protected that 90%. Because you give you give the 10, now it cannot be devoured by the evil one. Now you can do everything you want. You can buy everything you need because it is protected by the, by the 10% you give. The moment we understand this concept, that we live by the 10%, then we'll be faithful tithers, knowing that the moment we'll stop giving the tithe, then we expose ourselves to the attacks of the evil one, that will come and devour us with all kinds of attacks 
because we are unprotected. May we seek protection. Yesterday we were learning that God favors the givers. He favors the cheerful givers. Today we are also learning that God protects those who give their tithes. Their tithes. He protects the tithers. He blesses those who tithe. He also makes sure that the plans of those who tithe succeed. They flourish to, to ripe. They don't fall before they ripe. Their plans, their projects will not stall, but they will be completed. Their studies will not be stopped, but they will go to completion. Anything they do, not because God cannot stop them, but because he has promised that if you do this, I will do that. He is a God who promises and also fulfills the promise. We are called to just give. He's telling us, test me and tell me if I will not do this to you. In fact, God is allowing us to test him by our giving generously. And if and when we understand this concept that we live by the 10 percent we give. We will cheerfully give. We will generously give. We will give with joy in our hearts, knowing that we are coming to give towards our protection. We are coming to, uh, to give so that we can receive more. And we will be quick to give because we know without the 10 percent, we cannot survive. We survive, we live, we eat, we do everything. The 10 percent we give to God. We continue to receive, we continue to reap harvests, not from the 90%, but from the 10 we sow. Remember, it is that seed you sow in tithes that you continue eating. It is not the 90 that you remain with. Number two, let us give, knowing that we are giving the first fruit. Before we do anything else, let us give our tithes and let us be faithful with our tithe, because God expects us to be faithful towards his worship. And this we have said that giving is a worship, it's an act of worship. Let us remember, when we hold back our giving, then God also holds back his giving. Because we are denying ourselves blessings, we are denying ourselves protection, we are denying ourselves success and achievement in everything we do by holding back what we should give. It is indeed true, no one has enough. And in fact, our expenses are more than what we earn. But with that act, with that love, that heart of giving, of responding towards God's providence and also obeying his word through our tithes, then we can be assured that God will meet all our needs according to his riches in heaven. Why? Because he will continue to supply. He will continue to open the floodgates of blessings. He will continue to give. He will continue to help us to reap because we are continuing to sow. May God help us that we are, we be faithful, one with our tithes. Number two, we be, be quick to come and bring our tithes as the first fruit. Number three is to remember that God wants us to also give ourselves as a living sacrifice. When we are not a living sacrifice, then our sacrifices, our tithes will not be living but dead. Let us search our hearts and remember that God wants us to live a holy life, a life that is pleasing before him, a life that is worthy his praises because we are his children, we are his people, we belong to him. Let us come before him with our sacrifices, the tithes, the thanksgiving, with a cheerful heart and reconciled with him and with people, a living sacrifice. Sacrificing ourselves, leaving everything else and to live for God. There are many things that may be pleasing in this world, but we are called to live, to be a living sacrifice. Let us come before God with our tithes, knowing that we are not only giving, but we are giving with a promise of receiving. Let us remember we are giving our hearts first, 
before giving our offering, before giving our tithes. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.